Welcome to Beale Science. Today things are about to get a little bit crazy. We've got some liquid nitrogen and we've got some oxygen and we're going to take the oxygen and turn it into liquid oxygen. And then we're going to do a little bit of experiment. So stick with me. Let's do this. So here's what we've got to do. We're going to take a nice large test tube. We're going to fill a balloon up with oxygen and then we're going to put that over the top and we're going to start to cool it down. Let me put this down before I hurt myself. People have spoken. Here goes nothing. I'm going to put this over the top without losing all my oxygen. Gloves. The liquid nitrogen is negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 190 degrees or negative 190 degrees Celsius. It's cold. But oxygen will turn from a gas into a liquid at about mm, negative 300, which means I'm going to hurt myself before I get started which means as the air in the test tube condenses, we should see this get smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes from a gas into a liquid. Although, it takes a little while. Let's check in on our red one. Oh, buddy. Look at that, it's pulling that balloon all the way in. Now you can see we've got a significant decrease in volume. There's very little oxygen in there for how much space it was taking up when it was gas. So we're gonna need a few more of these. Now I'll just keep working on it. It takes time. Look, it's expanding a little bit. Oh, oh, it's growing. Growing, growing. Better get it back in. Woo, here we go, friend. Add one more. Hey, okay, while I'm working on this, I should probably say that the powers of B tell me I have to say this. Do not try this at home. You're going to see flames. You're going to you're going to see things on fire. You're going to see things that apparently you're only supposed to do in the chemistry lab. So don't do them at home. Watch them right here at Beal Science. Let's start here with a cheesy poof. Now cheesy poofs have carbohydrates and oils and fats and everything else in them, so they are flammable. And if we look at the label on the back of this, it will tell us just how much energy is in there because that's what calories are. So hey light this thing and it will burn, sort of. Part of the problem here is there's just not a lot of oxygen getting in there to get it to burn really well. Well, I think we have just solved that problem because we've made ourselves liquid oxygen. Hmm, let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and light these up, add some liquid oxygen and see what happens. Get a little bit of fire there. That's much better combustion. Liquid oxygen number two. Ooh! Can you see anything? That's intensely bright. Woo! A little bit of smoke. Hold on. We got that. Ain't nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. And just to prove the point, when we take oxygen away, the flame goes out. Liquid oxygen has some interesting properties. For one, we tend to think of gases or uh, liquids as being clear. And in general, they are. But liquid oxygen, it's blue. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody keeps telling me it's impossible to see the blue. So here's a different view. And yeah, you can see it, sort of. It's kind of a light blue, like a baby blue. It's actually quite beautiful. But it's hard to see, I promise you, it's blue. Now here's the thing, there's some other amazing properties. On the right here is a neodymium magnet. On the left is aluminum. Because liquid oxygen is magnetic. Look at it to be attracted. It's attracted to the neodymium magnet. People always ask the other thing. Well, is it flammable? No, it's not flammable, because there's no fuel, it's just oxygen. But, if I add some fuel, like, hmm, a piece of paper, and light it on fire, and put it in the presence of the oxygen, boy, it burns really, really nicely. And just one more thing, look at this over here. That little chunk, that's CO2, that's dry ice. While we're playing with liquid oxygen, there's one thing that I love to do, and that's get out the steel wool. Now, why would we care about steel wool if we're learning about oxygen? Well, steel rusts, okay? 
it turns into iron oxide, iron three oxide mostly, as it combines with the air around it. But this is a slow process. It is a slow chemical reaction. We can speed that up by adding a little flame to some fine steel wool. Ah, huh? Rusty! Isn't it pretty? So that's faster, obviously, than if we just leave the steel wool laying out in the air. But it's not as fast as it could be. You see, the limiting factor here is oxygen. If we had more oxygen, this would rust even more quickly as it goes from iron into iron three oxide. Well, I think we've got that problem solved today because we've got liquid oxygen. See that? Now you can see the blue. Tell me you can see the blue. Please tell me you can. I don't know if you can or not. Oh, get in there. Oh, get in there. Try again. Going in. Ooh. Like fireworks. That is ridiculously bright because that chemical reaction is happening much more quickly. Right on. We made rust. Love it. So I just can't help myself. We have to have one more last grand cheesy poof eruption. Cheesy poofs on fire. Liquid oxygen going in. I am blinded and it smells. But hey, we got lots more stuff just like liquid oxygen over here at Beale Science. Hit the subscribe button down there. There's going to be videos popping up. You can come over to BealScience.com. Doesn't really matter, you know. The whole reason I do these is for this. Just so you can keep on learning. Thanks for watching.